Hello and welcome to lesson one of week eight. In this lesson, we are going to look at functional programming, iterators, and generators in Python. My name is Mildred. When we looked at functions in the previous lesson, we saw how we can create functions for almost all app functionalities. Now, functions take an input and returns an output. And we use the return statements. Let's create a function. Let's say function greet. Or let's use a function that takes a parameter. Let's say function sum, num, and takes two parameters, a and b, and returns the sum of a and b. So it takes an input, a and b, returns an output. And when we try to print some num, two, and three, we should get five printed when we run this. There are different paradigm of using a programming language. Some languages like Python are multi-paradigm which means that we can write python in an object-oriented way we can write it in a procedural way or in a functional way and when we say language uses a procedural paradigm we mean that it's a list of instructions that just tell the computer what to do and one of these is like the c language and when we say that the language is used in a functional way we mean that the program is broken down into sets of instructions and function only takes input and produces output. So in functional programming, input flows through a set of instructions. Each function operates as a set of input and produces some output. So when we have functions, we want to discourage um, side effects. But in Python, we have some inbuilt functions with side effects, like the print function that we just used here. The side effect of the print is that it send something to the screen um, some text to the screen to print or we have a, a function that we call let's say times of sleep if we use this sleep and we set the amount of time in second which um, stops execution for a set amount of time so these are functions with side effects although we try to discourage um, all of these when writing um, programming functional ways so functional programming in python just provides a functional appearance interface but actually uses non-functional features internally and one of the advantage of functional programming is the ease of debugging and testing and the modularity it provides by breaking down problems into little pieces of functions and over time we can have different functions that can be used in different program or situations and then we we'll have a library of utility now this leads us to a concept called iterators now when we have an app that we're going to build we are going to be doing that in a functional way where we create a lot of proper functions that we just call to execute a particular task. We have iterator, which is the foundation of writing functional program. An iterator is an object that represents a data stream and returns one data element at a time. So what it does is it traverses through all of the items in that stream. For instance, when we use the for in loop, we say for i in a stream of data, we want to print i so i is now the iterator so it produces an iterator so that is an example of an iterator when we have an iterator we implement the iter method written like this and then another method called the next method written next like this the iterator objects implement these two method and what happens is that this next method doesn't take any argument but returns the next element of the of the stream if there are no more elements in the stream then it raises a particular exception that we call the stop iteration exception so this iter function functions like the init we looked at when we look at classes in that first lesson where um, it is it takes like an arbitrary object and tries to return an iterator that will return the object's content or element and if the object does not support iteration it now raises a type error where you to say um, we'll try to iterate through an integer not a list or something and then we have a type error that this is not an iterable object okay so we have several data types in python that support iteration we have looked at the different data types we have lists we have dictionaries we have tuples these support iteration um, interface in, in python so let's try to create an iterator to illustrate all that we have been saying i want to have a list and i want to use the item method to implement this so let's say we have a list I'll just name this my list and this list is equal to let's say Jane, John, James, Judy, Jack and I want to just name this iterator is equal to iter my list and I want to get each 
element of the iterator. So I'll use the next method. So I want to print or um, say A is equal to next iterator, B is equal to next iterator, C is equal to next iterator, D is equal to next iterator. So we'll say A, B, C, D, E is equal to next iterator. And then we want to do F that does not exist. And when we do that, this is going to error out when we try to get um, F. We're going to have the stop iteration um, exception raised because we have just five items here and we have the next method is only going to implement five times. So let's say we want to print A, B, C, D and let's print F here. So let's see what happens here. When we run this, we have stop iteration exception raised because of this F. Now if I comment this out and comment this out and when I run again, we are going to have J, John, James, Judy, Jack printed because I have just five items. And when it reaches the end, the next is going to raise the stop iteration exception just like we just saw um, recently. We can actually implement an iterator class. Let's create a class that implements an iterator that increments by one for every call of the next method and raises the stop iteration exception when it reaches the limit, which we will set to something like 10. So we're just trying to implement this to be able to have a deeper look at um, iterators. So let's create a class and let's say we want this to be, um, let's just call this iterator. Let's call this my iterator. And this class, we now use def. We say the iter functions like the init and we have self. We want to say self dot, we're going to have x is equal to one. So we're defining a new variable x and we set it to one and then we we'll return self. We want to also create the next method here. Let's implement the next method and we say self. If self is less than, let's say less than or equal to 10, we want to assign this to, let's say y is equal to self.x and then we'll say self.x plus equal one and then we'll return y. If there is no next or we read the end, we want to raise top iteration exception. So we're just trying to implement a class, an iterator class that is going to iterate through the numbers 1 to 10. We initialize the number stored in x as 1 and then we increment um, i using the next method. If we have reached the end or if x is less than or equal to 10, we want it to raise stop iteration exception. So let's say my class is equal to my iterator. And we're going to use the item method now so that we can print each of the next item. So I'll say my item is equal to item my class. And I want to loop through it. So I'll say for x in my item, I want to print x. So what I'm trying to achieve here is to traverse through the every single item and print them out using this for loop. So this iterator class provides the numbers one to 10 increments the number from 1 to 10 and the next method is going to traverse through it and goes to the next item next item and then prints them out to the screen by using the for loop so that i can print out every item to the screen and so when i run i print one two three so when it goes next 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 and when it gets to the end or if it's greater than 10 you should do raise stop exception so this is just a, an example just to look to have a deeper look of how we use the iter and next method um, in Python to actually implement an iterator or to see what an iterator is. And the reason we are doing this is for us to be able to understand this concept enough to be able to use it in the next topic we are going to look at called generator. Now we already know that several data types support iteration in Python. We say list to post dictionaries. This first statement also um, expects an iterable. Um, we can go forward with an iterator, but we cannot go backward. Um, so what function does is that it consumes all the iterator output. So if you need to do something else with the same stream, what will now happen is that you have to create a new iterator. So there are other methods that uses iteration in Python. In dictionaries, we will look at the items and the values method. Those are methods that support iteration. In when we look at file handling, the read line method also supports iteration. So you can read more about iteration and iterators and how to implement an iterator um, when we need it. So we're going to look at the concept of generators that actually uses iteration as its foundation. So a generator is a function 
that returns an iterator. This iterator returns a stream of values. When we call a function, the local variables are created and destroyed when it meets a return statement. And then the return statement now returns a value to the caller. But when we use generator functions, we can resume the function where it's left off. So generators are just like resumable function or something that produces a lazy iterator. So they're easy to implement, they're memory efficient. We can use it to represent an infinite stream of um, data since we can store infinite stream of data in memory. So generator will produce one iterator at a time. And in Python, we anything you see, instead of the return statement, we use a yield statement is a generator. Let's implement a generator that will loop through the numbers 0 to 50 and then displays every even number from that number. We can create our generator for this like this. Def, let's say generator function as the name. And what we want to implement here is to get the number 0 to 50 and we want to check if it's an even number, we want to print it out to the screen. We're not going to cater for if it's an odd number. We just want to use this as an example for um, looking at an iterator. So we'll say for i in range. So we'll say from 0 to 50. So in range 50, we want to check if the number modulo 2 is equal to 0, we want to yield i. So now we've created this function that says loop through the number 0 to 50 and display all of the given numbers to the page. So we can say we have a variable called y and we we'll assign generator function to y. And what we want to do is, instead of printing next y to get just one value, let's do this and you'll see what we'll get. Then we can just loop through to see all the values. So next y is 0. If I print another y, print next y, 0, 2. Because 1 is an odd number, 2 is an even number. Next y, we get 4. And so it goes like a 0, 2, 4. If I want to loop through everything that the generator will print, we can say for i in y, print i like this. And when I run, it gives me 0, 2, 4. So this is the concept of generator, where we create more memory efficient functions. Um, generator functions uses yield instead of return statement. It's um, a resumable function. It uses the concept of iteration. And this is where we end this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to look at reflection in Python. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.